I'm gonna talk about math. Don't freak out. I know it's not everybody's favorite subject or best or strongest. I don't know. Some people like it, but in general, stereotypically, populations in the United States have certain beliefs about their skills in mathematics, all right? We can, can we agree on that? <laughs> I know not maybe you individually hate math, but in general, people tend not to like it. Maybe for a lot of different reasons, but that's the case nonetheless, right? Maybe we should take some data down first. Let's collect some statistics. We'll start with statistics. Everybody wants to throw statistics around nowadays, right? <laughs> We're so quick to jump behind them, support them or argue with them. And I'm like, wait a second. I thought nobody even liked math. Or I remember teaching it, at least at where I taught at the age that I taught, teachers had to go to workshops to learn how to teach statistics to students. And the students always had trouble with it. In fact, we spiraled statistics in the curriculum for years. And kids still don't know how to calculate mean, median, or mode, or know the difference between them or anything else contextually. Because we teach it, you know, we don't even teach statistics really as a course. It, maybe in high school, if you had some advanced math path, but otherwise you get it thrown in here and there. When it, it's used, look how it's used in our society. We, there's teachable moments for statistics all day long. So whatever, that's where I'm going to start is statistics, I guess, talking about math. Don't be scared because we're not going to do much math. We're just going to talk about it, really. Where should we start with statistics? I would start with bias, but I don't want to start there. We'll start with mean because a mean is something that most people know how to find. The average. Everybody, you've been averaging since you were a kid. You didn't know it, but you have been. You've been equally distributing to find some central point in the data. I uh, Just think about when your parents made you share Halloween candy with your siblings or something. You might have, maybe with some friends or some other family members, I don't know. Or you can at least ma imagine this situation, right? Where some kids have more candy, some kids have less candy, some kids fell and scraped their knee or their bag broke or they got beat up and it was stolen, whatever, I don't know. But you might decide that, you know what, even though we all have varying amounts, we're gonna dump them all into the middle of the table or the floor and then we're gonna equally divide them. And you started just visually probably, just by mass, and then you probably develop some other way. Maybe you said, okay, well I have 10 and you have how many there and how many there, so let's, let's shift them back and forth, right? Or you might've found some new way where you just divvied them out. You get some and then you get some of this and you get some of this and then back around, you get the next one, you get the next one, you get the next one so on and so forth, until all the candy's gone. The extras would go to the parents or something like that, right? But you were averaging. That's the mean. Whatever number, the number of pieces of candy that the, each kid had after you've evenly distributed them all, that's mean. You've been doing it for years. The averaging is finding a attempting to find some central point of data by taking all of the information and evenly distributing it. There's algorithms to doing it because sometimes you don't, you can't visualize stacking a bunch of things into a table and then equally dividing them. So we teach you an algorithm somewhere along the, the line, but everybody forgets it. And I don't understand how, because it's exactly the way, because you're, you're fo too focused on the algorithm. Just think of what you would do. You want to find the average of something? What did you do with Halloween candy? You added everybody's together. And then you divided it by how much? Some random number? No. You divided it by however many groups you were making. Maybe how many siblings or people were there. Or maybe you kept some spots. You said, well, we got to think about this person and this person. They're not here. They didn't get to get candy. But we're going to divide it for them as well. We, we take the total amount, divide it by how many people or whatever, depends on the situation. In the candy's case, how many people we're dividing in between. Okay, that's the algorithm. Add things up, then divide by how many groups you want. Yeah. 
Why does everybody forget that? You you innately know how to do it. It's when we start bringing, oh, well, it's X to this plus X to this or X sub this, whatever, all divided by this. People are like, oh, what, what? And they learn it as a measure of center in with median and mode and all these other things. And it's just statistics is almost, well, math in general is more innate than you think. If I were to give you a bunch of different bottles with liquids in them and they all had varying amounts of liquids and i said okay we'll figure out on average how much liquid we could give to everybody if you evenly distribute this liquid and you had all graduated cylinders and some had more or less liquid in them you just start pouring back and forth right until you figured out how they were equally balanced that's all we're trying to do here some have more some have less if we were to take however much is there and then redistribute it evenly. How much would each have? And sometimes that's useful to do and sometimes that's not. But that's what you're doing. So when you think of the algorithm, you're adding things up and then dividing by how many there are in the Halloween example. But in the graduated cylinder example, sorry, I don't know why I emphasized the word right there. In the graduated cylinder example, you're dividing each one up independently and you're still finding, though, an average. And I think that's important to note is don't ever let maybe forgetting the algorithm get in the way of your natural understanding of what averaging is. You can do it. Try and visualize it, even if it's something that isn't, right? If it's test scores in a class, that's harder to visualize putting, oh, you got an 89, put that onto the table. You got a 70, put that onto the table. And then we're going to add up everybody's points and then redistribute all the points. And then it kind of doesn't make sense. You're like, wait, why are you redistributing all the points? But we're just finding an average. If we're to take everybody's points and redistribute them to everybody, how much would each person have? That's what the mean is. So when you throw it around or you hear it being thrown around, context might change how important that number is or the mean might not be the only thing to look at. For example, let's look at some test scores. Let's look at the test scores in four classes. We won't do too many. I'm going to give them all the same test. There's 10 kids in each class. I'm going to give them all the same test. We'll say that in class one, the class average was this. Class two, the class average was this, so on and so forth. What? That's weird. Or am I just that consistent? Can I go to my teacher meetings and say, hey, look how consistent my scores are. Are you interested in my pedagogies now? The reliability and validity of my testing procedures and assessment types, on point. <laughs> Probably not. Probably not. If we look closer at the data, so what I've given you is the mean, the average, a class average. Some kids scored 100, some kids scored 20. We're trying to figure out on average, what did everybody score? If we averaged all the points, sometimes that's useful. Sometimes that's not. Let's look closer. We might see when and where it is or isn't. But let's look at this information displayed in a different way. Let's look at it in some sort of chart where we have maybe across the X axis, we have test score, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%. And that's, we'll say the test that's all you could get is a 10, a 0, a 10, a 20, a 30. You couldn't get 38s or anything like that. And put on the y-axis, I guess, how many students got each of those scores. So if somebody was right here, for example, that would mean something. <laughs> I, had, I don't have it in my head yet. I haven't thought of these numbers. Here's a picture for it. <laughs> Did I already put the picture up? Probably. Moving on. Now... We would innately know something's odd. If I said to you, if you, know, if you knew nothing, if you didn't know, hey, why is that X there with a the line over it? That's just another way we represent mean. It means the average. We already discussed that. Okay, calm down. If I just told you that that number was the same, I said, hey, look, and pretend you don't know how to find mean yet. Pretend you don't know anything about it. If I said to you, look at these classes. I gave them all the same test. And when I did some math, I got this number. And I did some math and I got this number. And I did some math and I got this number. I got all the same number. Yet, th these situations are what led to me getting that same number. What do you think about it? You'd have some things to say. You'd have some natural curiosities and don't think of it as if, as if it's an answer on a test or something. Just 
What's your natural reaction to it? You know something's up here. There's something to be looked at. Then I would like to point out the mean just hanging out. <laughs> what? What's going on? The mean leans. The mean can be places where no data point actually is. In one class, everybody's hovered around the class average, where in another class, everybody's equidistant almost from the class average. Or in this class, where if we just take these scores out and recalculate, re-add all the scores that we have, divide what does the mean? Add them back in. Let's look at it again. Take them out. What do we notice? The mean kind of can shift over just with a couple of points, extreme points. That is something, right? The mean is only part of a story. You can't use it as some sort of you know, one number that represents a norm of any kind. It requires other things. Let's look at these test scores and let's look at individual test scores lined up. And let's look at how far each of these test scores are away from the mean. Is there not something curious now? Now try and talk about it. In any way, there is no, there's nothing right or wrong to think about here. You just know something's wrong is my point. You have a natural ability to understand grouping of data or an interpreting data. Mean is just one way of trying to figure it out. It doesn't tell the whole story sometimes, or there's more to be said. I don't know how you want to look at it. So calculate mean. Go ahead. You know, you want to know the algorithm. Add everything up. Divide by how many things there are. It's easy to remember because that's what you did naturally, right? You're equally distributing things. And sometimes that number is useful and sometimes it's not. But we... We need to know that we need to look at more than the mean. It's a good place to start, though. If you like this and want more videos, let me know. If it's too slow or too fast, I don't know who I'm really talking to, what demographic or their level of understanding of statistics. If I need to go back and talk about just the basis of statistics more, maybe. I don't know. Let me know.